Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my epic rant on the 2022 horror film, House of Darkness. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on what honestly might as well be called House of Fartness, because this film stunk so bad, I would like to give a special shout out to Brock for requesting this review, and if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, Feel free to donate to my PayPal, the link will be in the video description down below, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now, House of Darkness is one of those films I knew absolutely nothing about until it was requested for me to watch, and I went into it with incredibly low expectations as a result, and it still wound up disappointing me and infuriating me. And uh, would probably make my worst of list when it comes to uh, the worst films that I've seen this year so far. It's that awful of a film. It's one of those movies that you can barely even call it a movie because there's not really enough there for 20 minutes of runtime, let alone an hour and a half. I mean, I think even 20 minutes is a stretch. There's not enough here for 10 minutes. And it's also another one of those movies that's not as clever as it thinks it is and can be a little too pretentious at times while also trying to have its cake and eat it too in terms of being a little tongue in cheek and trying to be funny and cheeky. Uh, it's one of those movies where there's not a lot that happens for the majority of the running time. Except for like a little burst of blood at the end of the movie. It's a film that also wants to preach another tired, stale message. This time around, the one that we've heard ad nauseum and over and over and over again as of late. Like a broken fucking record that men suck and men are misogynists and men are sexist. And men are horrible, awful, and should be exterminated. I, I, I honestly, that, that's honestly it's the message that the films like this get across. And anything that a female character does that is equivalent to what a male character could do or has done in the past is not the same because of the fact that it's a female character double standards so yeah this film ooh. so it's directed by neil laboot uh or labute or however you want to say it uh this is a guy who he directed a few things like he directed nurse betty yeah he directed nurse betty he directed the wicker man remake and Lakeview Terrace. So this is from the director of the Wicker Man remake. And this film is so bad and so boring that it makes the Wicker Man remake look like a masterwork. Like I would easily rather watch that again than House of Darkness. Because the Wicker Man remake at least has Nicolas Cage acting like a crazy psycho. Dressing up in a bear suit and smacking bitches in the face. So, uh, the film is also written by Neil Laboot, <clears throat> and he hasn't written a lot of films. He's written plays. Like, he's a guy who's written a lot of plays. Well, actually, no, he wrote a lot of films as well. But this is definitely some of his worst output when it comes to his writing. Because this is another one of those scripts where it's got an agenda... It's got a message. It's got some kind of <clears throat> really forced, heavy-handed bit of subtext that it's trying to throw in there about, like I said, sexist men. And it shoehorns in a vampire angle into it. And there are some moments in this script that were kind of clever, like the surprise appearance of a third sister, but 
other than that, the majority of this script sucks. Most of this script is just two women flirting with Justin Long's character in this film. Really. Just two women flirting with this guy named Hap. You have Mina and Lucy just flirting with him for the majority of the running time and manipulating him and making him think that they they want him or they are uh up for a night of sex and drinking and so on and in between all the flirting there's like one nightmare sequence where hap is tied up in a chair in some underground um uh, room or just just underneath the house some catacomb or something and he gets killed or or he's left for dead and he tries to escape and then he falls and breaks his leg and then he wakes up because of course it's not real it's just a nightmare because it's one of those scripts that's just lazy and tiresome and just incredibly pathetic and then the two girls flirt some more then one of them starts telling this backstory about how uh, one of them was uh, gang uh, raped, assaulted by this uh, th these these men hundreds of years ago or a decade ago, not really a decade, a century ago, and she was taken under um, the wing of some vampire and the vampire's family and she was given new life and they teamed up and got revenge on the men and so that's what she and her sister have been doing this entire time is they have been luring these lecherous just disgusting vile evil men into their home or into their various different homes across the united states to feed on them you even have like a line of dialogue from just along's character hap where he's he even says that he's a good guy you know uh not necessarily he didn't say that he was a nice guy but it was close enough that that might as well have been what the intent was and like i said there's a third sister that pops up randomly near the end in a twist and then it just predictably ends the way that you think it's gonna end Justin Long's sexist, misogynistic character gets eaten alive by these vampire women and end credits. Of course, you know, prior to him getting eaten alive, of course, he has to call them out and call them bitches and call them all, every name in the book to make him look like a total piece of shit and an evil, just awful person. Because the only way that these writers can make men look this bad is in cartoonish fashion it's funny that there are people out there that actually think this is a realistic depiction of how men behave or how men are in society and saying that all men are uh either like this or they are uh somehow co um complicit in, in whatever the uh, actions are are of the men that do genuinely horrible, awful things. Just because there are men who have manipulated women in the past and still do to this day, or have abused women in the past and still do to this day, that doesn't mean that all men are like that. And screenplays and films and stories like this create a very damaging uh, stereotype isn't the right word, but they do provide a very damaging view of all men. And if the roles were, were reversed, it would be considered completely 100% unacceptable by most critics and by most uh, people in society nowadays. So I don't understand why there's this double standard. I really don't. Uh, I don't think it should be acceptable either way. It doesn't matter if there was a, a long run of sexism in Hollywood and in film 
and so on. That doesn't give you a free pass to be equally a sexist in my mind. I, I'm sorry. It doesn't give you a free pass to do that just because that's what happened in the past. I think a lot of these writers, a lot of these people, a lot of these filmmakers, they think that it's their turn now. And it's like, why don't you just be better? You want to talk about, oh, we're so much better than the men. Or we're so much better than these misogynists and these sexists by stooping down to their level. Like, if you want to show how much better you are, then don't stoop down to the same level. I'm just saying. And this is just a pathetic excuse of a script because the majority of it is just there to try to shove this tiresome message down people's throats and it's done in such a clunky haphazard just half-assed fashion the script is completely devoid of any characters that you give any amounts of shit about and it makes it so the film has really slow pacing there's no investment in the story or where it's going because either you don't care about anyone or you know exactly where it's going. And then it just goes in the same direction that you saw it going in from the moment you pressed play. And it's a shame because, you know, there are some good actors and actresses in this production. I mean, you got Justin Long, who is just straight up down bad this year in 2022, isn't he? He was down bad in Barbarian. He's down bad here. He plays a guy named Hap Jackson. And he's the sad sack, pathetic man who gets manipulated and lured by these women. And he gets the, the idea that they want him, but they're just using him. And that's the thing. That's another thing that I, that honestly does point to the double standard. It's, it's really puzzling to me that like these women manipulating Justin Long's character and giving him blue balls and doing all this other shit and so on and lying to him and leading him on. That's all considered acceptable and fine. But Justin Long buying into that and thinking that they want it or they're in, in they want some sex or they want a one night stand when that's pretty much all that they are uh, providing in terms of signals, in terms of what they're looking for, he's the one that's to blame. He's the one that's the, the, the guy that's in the wrong. He's in the wrong here because he's a guy, because he's a man. And he shouldn't just assume these things. But you're the ones that are providing all these fucking signals. Like, what else do you expect him to think? You, if you're sending all these signals off that you want it and you're into this and you want to have a night of sex and, and, and fun and booze, why else would, uh, would any man or any woman for that matter, if she was into being with other women why why would they think otherwise that's the thing it's like the double standard is ridiculous especially when you have to do this much mental gymnastics to try to make it make this uh message or this uh point stick oh fuck hap he's such a horrible person for just believing these women and picking up on the signals they were giving off. All right. That makes everyone horrible then. What, what I mean, really? If, I just cuz isn't that what happens in, when it comes to relationship or when it comes to people that want to have a one night stand or just just want to fuck? Isn't it isn't a vibe? Isn't it one of those things where they just go off of what one another seem to be putting off? I, I just just baffles me this stupid double standard but yeah waste justin long who once again plays a really good douchebag i mean you might as well give him the award for uh best douche of 2022 because 
he plays some of the best douchebag characters out there, but that doesn't mean that he's playing likable characters, which is a shame because I think Justin Long could definitely do that. What is that? The only roles he's going to get from now on is playing a douchebag, misogynistic asshole. Is that really all that he's ever going to get? As as a character actor, is just playing these kind of these characters. If so, that's sad, and that's a waste of his talents. It's also a waste of Kate Bosworth's talents as Mina, or Gia Crovation as Lucy. Lucy Walters as Nora was kind of there. She was barely even in it. Um, but she was okay, I guess. But. Yeah, I mean, this script wastes whatever good performances any of this cast was able to bring to the table because it's that bad of a script. And I see how to see this script get a pass. Like Peter DeBroge of Variety, he wrote a positive review of the film, writing that it neatly comments on the newly uncertain dynamics of modern dating where decent guys claim to no longer know how to proceed. Yeah, because... What, what are they supposed to fucking do? And what's wrong with the idea of decent guys anyway? What what is is this supposed is this one of those things where the assumption should be that all men are problematic and that all men are are indecent? That's fucked up. That's just wrong on every level. Like it, it, like I said, if, if the roles were reversed, it would be unacceptable, but this double standard that exists seems to make it seem like it's okay. Like, if you said, like, oh, well, all women are, uh, it really um, tears apart this concept uh, where uh, in modern dating, uh, decent women don't really know how to proceed with men anymore. That person would be canceled immediately. But because of the fact that it's a man or it's men, it's acceptable? Why the fuck is this shit acceptable nowadays? This man-hating bullshit. So, Nikki Bahan, she wrote another review saying that it's always welcome to see filmmakers presenting a challenge to the patriarchal status quo, even if toxic femininity proves just as damning here as its masculine counterpart. Well, you just contradicted yourself here. Like, you gave it a positive review, but it doesn't really provide that much of a positive perspective or or anything going for for the future or anything going forward or even now and you just give it a pass because it presents a challenge to the patriarchal status quo i don't know maybe have some higher standards than that because there are a million fucking films nowadays that that challenge the patriarchy I love how a lot of these writers and a lot of these critics nowadays, they seem to think that challenging the patriarchy is some brave, bold vision. It's not been attempted or it hasn't been attempted that much. Here's the reality. It's been attempted hundreds of times by now, if not thousands of times between the past like 10 years or so. It's It's been attempted so many times now that it's, a cliche it's becoming a trope so no it's not what i would call something that is worthy of praising just because they did it again so yeah i just <laughs> i hated this movie it was boring there's no reason for me to give a shit about any of these characters it sucked what happened to i i think it was uh I believe it was Mina. No, it was Lucy, I think. It sucked that that's what happened to Lucy. And she was she was wrong. Did she sought vengeance on these men who assaulted her? And that doesn't mean that it's okay to go throughout the rest of your immortal life just targeting men and acting like all men are the same as the men who assaulted you? I'm sorry. That's that's just not. That's equally as. Uh, ir um, irreprehensible, so to speak. 
And even like the visuals are nothing that impressive. The direction, like I said, seemed better work in other films that he did. This looked very low budget, very cheap. Uh, nothing special about it. Uh, nothing that unique when it comes to the, the the camera angles or the the movement or or anything in terms of the visuals or the style. Actually, looked pretty drab at, at times, especially when it comes to the way it was lit. Then you had the cinematography by Daniel Katz, which is just more of the same. The editing by Bridget Durnford, nothing remotely uh, uh, that great. I guess average and mid is the best that, that I could I could give when it comes to credit for the editing. The music, I don't remember anything about this score. It was that forgettable by uh, uh, Adam Bosage. And for a film that's 88 minutes, it feels like 188. Because like I said, you don't give a shit about this story. Because so much of it is filler. So much of it early on is just Justin Long picking up this girl, this woman at a after meeting at a bar. Uh, the woman is Mina. She takes him to her castle-like estate. Then she basically flirts with him for what feels like an eternity. And then her sister comes in and then starts flirting too. Then you have some scenes where they both are flirting with him. Then you have uh, the dream sequence that I mentioned, like in the middle of all of this. Then you have uh, a scene where Mina and Lucy are, are telling ghost stories uh to uh hap and hap of course prior to that hap tells one of his own and he basically makes both of them into a joke and tells a story that is that is about the the night with the two of them and uses it to make it look like he's uh hot shit and he's such a cool guy and in such a forced, heavy-handed way to make him look like a, a sexist pig. And like I said, it then predictably ends the way that you expect it's going to end. The, the sexist pig gets eaten. He gets eaten at the end of the movie. And that's it. That's all. I, I'm not even going to give the, the fact that it had some practical effects and gore a whole lot of extra credit. Because that's a given in a lot of these independent horror films. Because it's actually cheaper for them to have practical effects than it is to use uh, 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 CGI or anything uh, of that sort. So they go the cheaper route and they do practical effects. And even that wasn't even really that impressive. I mean, it was just typical stuff. Like uh, the one of the girls bites Justin Long's neck and he bleeds. Or she ripped off a piece of his skin. And then caused his throat to like just spurt blood everywhere. But then for some reason he doesn't die right away. And he just uh, lingers until they eventually bite him some more and kill him. I guess it's because they had to have him say one last word or some shit or whatever. Regardless, I don't fucking care. I don't give a shit. Uh, and I don't really know what else to say about House of Fartness, uh, except it was total anal waste, and uh, definitely not a film I would recommend unless you want to see boring scenes of two women flirting with Justin Long for what feels like ages, one lame, predictable dream sequence in between it all, and uh, a scene where Justin Long gets eaten by vampires. Of course, also uh, the fact that you get another message of misogyny and and how men are are pieces of shit shoved down your throat for what feels like the a thousand for the millionth time at this point. So if 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 that's what you're looking for when it comes to your entertainment or your modern horror films then this will probably be right up your alley and you'll, you'll be a big fan of it. But if you're not, then definitely uh, avoid this one because there's nothing here 
there's nothing here for you. There's no entertainment value. There's no, there's not even really anything when it comes to the subtext that is really that fresh or intriguing or interesting. It just regurgitates the same uh, vomit that you've already tasted uh, numerous times over at this point when it comes to the message. But anyway, uh, thank you for uh, watching my rant on House of Darkness. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.